Conservatives beware. Here comes again, buckle up. No shock. Russia, Russia, Russia all over again. 3.0 as I call it here. That'll be about the cutest thing you'll hear today. Because this is a damn serious story. Putin's back at it again, according to Biden's White House, the Department of Justice. All involving the 2024 election, how Putin once again has his hand in it, allegedly. But this time it wraps up some of the biggest names in conservative media. I'm going to show you the indictment today. Tenant media, to be more specific, alleged, as of right now, alleged. I want you to remember this line from Tenant Media out of Tennessee. is a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues. Because this story has to do with Tenant and it has to do with RT. This is a Russian government website, a news site that has been alleged to be run by the Russian government. It is their mouthpiece to put out stories, propaganda as many call it. In this indictment from the United States, just coming out, just being announced, it states within it, RT, formerly known as Russia Today, is a state-controlled media outlet funded and directed by the government of Russia. After Russia invaded Ukraine in February of 2022, RT was sanctioned, dropped by distributors, and ultimately forced to cease operation. Well, not really, because you can still search it today. But the story takes focus here. U.S. company number one, alleged now to be tenant, is a United States corporation established under the laws of Tennessee. Founder One has described U.S. company as a U.S. subsidiary of Founder One's Canadian company. But it goes deeper. Described itself as a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues. So when I say alleged you see how close that allegation is. But that's just where the story begins. And it's what we're going to cover for you here today in just a minute. Okay, now I want you to stop everything you're doing. Make sure you're subscribed. If you already are, thank you so much. If you're not, please click subscribe and make sure your bell is checked to all so you're alerted to upcoming broadcast she means that supporting me are either here there's a sponsorship platform or if you want more news that lisa haven and i provide exclusively on our own website you'll see why today we did this again story after story shows why we created restricted republic our own platform because the government keeps looking for every other platform and then doing what they did that we're about to discuss today. So right now, to enjoy Restricted Republic, simply type in discount code INDEPENDENCE in monthly checkout. That will get you $4 a month each month for two years. You cancel any time, 14 days for free to check it out. That's your means of supporting me. If you like how we're bringing you the news, what news we're bringing you, and that we always reference and research everything. RestrictedRepublic.com, I need you to get there today, but now let's get back to this story. I know I probably mentioned to you yesterday, Lisa and I kind of operate in silos when we pick stories, but I guarantee you she's going to be touching this one today because the story is so critical. Russia 1.0, Russia 2.0, Russia 3.0. It's so hard to tell them all apart. Christopher Steele dossier, all the stories that went along with it. Fusion GPS, of course, to name a few. Of course, all being determined as no collusion. But it seems this timing of all these findings always happen around the same time, don't they? The entire roadmap of Putin and Trump over and over again. But this story is about something different. They're going after something different. Yes, the only common denominator would be Putin and Russia. From Alpha Bank to Guccifer 2.0, if you remember that whole storyline, man, there was so many. The suspected spy, Joseph Misfit. We never hear about that. Misfit, I always mispronounce that. The PP tapes and so on and so forth. Nothing ever coming of it. All leading into, well, I guess you can call it Russia 2.0. The 
the Hunter Biden laptop story that nobody was allowed to hear about. All again, around the election, but it's all about Trump and Putin now, wasn't it? No matter what findings come out afterwards, the FBI verified its authenticity of the laptop in November of 2019, but don't look that way, look this way. There's a different story we want to tell you. Ignore the 51 intelligence officials that lied to you. Plain and simple. From Brennan and Clapper and so many more, the spies who lied. The intelligence experts who falsely discredited the Hunter Biden laptop story. It was all Putin's fault. It's all Trump's fault. Not enough for him. Because they continue to repeat the same narrative, don't they? Because now we have Russia 3.0. This one's terrifying, my friends. This just engulfed some of the biggest names in conservative media. In this whole of government action to purge the system of Russian propaganda ahead of the election. And here we go again. Jose, this is being described by our sources as a whole of government action designed to target Russian propaganda and disinformation aimed at interfering in the 2024 election. It is said to include sanctions by the Treasury Department, law enforcement action by the Justice Department. And one of the focuses is on RT, formerly known as Russia Today. At least that's where they're starting this. A whole of government approach. Garland there, Christopher Ray next to him. Biden administration announces major actions to tackle Russian efforts to influence the 2024 election. The administration hits Russia with sanctions over efforts to manipulate U.S. opinion ahead of the election. Why wasn't this done years ago? It just stopped. It took a pause. And now we're going to react again. Hmm. Okay. Let's hear what Merrick Garland has to say. To implement this scheme, the defendants directed the company to contract with U.S.-based social media influencers to share this content on their platforms. The subject matter and content of many of the videos published by the company are often consistent with Russia's interest in amplifying U.S. domestic divisions in order to weaken U.S. opposition to core Russian interests, particularly its ongoing war in Ukraine. Pretty clean cut, isn't it? But those personalities are primarily conservative, Tennessee-based, alleged tenant media. You see the list of celebrities up on top, don't you? Tim Pool, to name one. I'm going to show you what he has to say here in a minute. Indictment. Russian propagandists use Tennessee content company to push disinformation. This coming out of the Tennessean.com. An indictment unsealed Wednesday alleges a Tennessee content creation company was a tool of a Russian propagandist used to infiltrate U.S. How'd they get all these celebrities to join in? Well, according to documentation between Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, David Rubin, just to name a few, Lauren Southern, this company received alleged $10 million from the Russian government to publish content as part of a Russian influence operation. How convenient. Tenet is owned and controlled by Lauren Chen, who is affiliated with Turning Point USA. Is she? If you know Lauren Chen, you know she's gone in a lot of different directions lately. The influencer names appears to have been deceived about funding sources by Lauren Chen, founder of Tenet. Secondly, Lauren Chen, the alleged Russian agent, Receiving millions for propaganda. Is she in jail? Is she arrested? Not as of right now. You could still go to the RT website right now and still view it. But Lauren Chen, part of Turning Point USA, alleged Trump supporter, but not if you read what she's put up lately. Lauren Chen, I support Trump when he said he wanted to leave it as a state issue. That's fine. But saying you would go out of your way to veto an abortion ban, that you potentially use your executive power to overturn congressional legislation and the will of the people. No, I'm done. Guess that's Trump's support in somebody's book. Not mine. 
Man who identifies as a woman campaigning for Trump by saying to Trump and Vance will protect abortion access. This is your conservative movement. I'm out. Twice she's out. Three times she's out. How about four times? But I guess she's a Trump supporter. That's not who they were targeting, was it? No, I think Cernovich said it best here in a moment. There's something more to this story in this indictment. Commentator one was really insisting on seeing some materials, profiles, articles, whatever, on Edward, I think is the name, Edward, this man, Edward Gregorian, who doesn't exist. It's alleged that this is how Lauren tricked everyone. They showed, when they asked, she showed him a profile of an investor. Appeared up and up, except according to the indictment, he never existed. So the celebrities, the media personalities, in exchange for a monthly fee of $400,000 plus $100,000 signing bonus and an additional performance bonus, Commentators One Production Company agreed that any and all content created under this agreement shall be the property of U.S. company number one being tenant, alleged, to provide four weekly videos to be hosted by Commentator One, Commentator Two, a fee of $1,000 per video, $100,000 per video. It's a lot of money, folks. It's a lot of money. Tim Pool was one of these alleged commentators. He has a statement. I'm going to read it to you. Benny was the other. Taylor Hansen, Lauren Southern, David Rubin, Matt Christensen, all a portion of Tenant Media wrapped up in this mess. Just so happens that they're all primarily conservative broadcasters, of course. Lauren Chen's in big trouble, according to the Department of Justice. She and her husband work with the Russian government to launder sanction, busting money into her media company. But Cernovich says it best right underneath. Even after all these allegations, this sponsorship by the man who didn't exist, a fictitious, fictional character, Cernovich states, they let her off. Most likely, she entered some of the book, some off the book's deal to protect a federal asset who tenant media aggressively promoted and for access to all her devices. Plus they were able to monitor her under FISA and no doubt did a few hops off that. Hmm. Why isn't she arrested? Why is RT still running? What were they looking for? Who are they looking for? And when will we find out? They're not doing this for some small maneuver against RT. They could have done that at any point in time. Margaret Cleveland, this is likely a backdrop to Garland's Russia, Russia, Russia to note. One, no one seriously believes Russia backs Trump. Two, as a matter of fact, Russia just came out and said they would support more of her. She's more stable. Number two, what I want to know is whether anything Russia paid for is false. Were any of the stories that these commentators allegedly promoted, were they false doesn't seem to make a difference or was it simply against what one side would believe doj alleges russia funded u.s media company linked to right-wing social media russian money that that was on cnn sorry nbc news russian money was funneled to right-wing creators through a pro-trump media outlet see what they're doing here huff post Let's refresh this real quick. DOJ says two Russian-funded big-name online conservative media personalities. You see, it appears there was a target on this. Tim denying the allegations, saying he is in charge of his podcast. He was not ever given content. He creates his own content. Putin is a scumbag. That's what he states in his defense. I'd hate to be in his shoes right now. I'd hate to be in his shoes. I hate to be in Benny's shoes. Just so happens that Tim also announced he was going to be suing Kamala for defamation. 24 hours later, the DOJ launches this. I don't believe in coincidence, folks. Never have. Benny Johnson. I keep saying Benny Thompson. Sorry. Benny Johnson, a statement on the leaked DOJ indictment today. My lawyers will hand to anyone who states 
or suggest otherwise. We are distributed by allegations in today's indictment, which make clear that myself and other influencers were victims in this alleged scheme. I hate to be in Benny Johnson's shoes too. There's so much more that's going to be to this story. Taylor Hansen, already putting out proof that he was targeted, according to him, by the U.S. government for doing his job involving J6. You see, this hasn't stopped. It won't stop. Just ignore government Hochul's involvement with China. Ignore all that. It makes no difference, folks. Involve Hunter. Just ignore Hunter's indictments. This is more important over here. Because now they're going to launch this whole of government approach, whole of government, FBI, DOJ, who else? Who else will be involved in this? Who else will they dig up? You think they're stopping with these commentators? No, they're going to let them off. They're too big. They're too big of targets. Just quiet them down a little bit. It will be everybody else. Beware, conservatives. This is a major, major move. I was going to play Tenant Media where they actually state, the broadcasters state that together it's harder to take them down. But the Department of Justice didn't hesitate, did they? Because the Biden-Harris administration has pulled out the oldest story in the book again. Accusing Russia of meddling in the 2024 election. Folks, here we go again. I believe the story is just beginning. The Department of Justice did this for a much larger purpose. This dragnet is not done. There is no way. It's an old, used-up storyline that has resulted in nothing, nothing of any benefit to the American people, but yet they're going to drag it out again. Pull it out of the closet, dust it off. Let's see if this works for a third time. And we will be covering this story every day more as it develops. I love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.